Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to my very first live in a very, very long time. I am today doing some Shelly Art Blooms. Very excited to have you guys with me to do this. Tonight, I have been working on quite a few different blooms and... I'm just happy that you guys are with me in the chat. So, welcome, everybody, to the video. It has been a very long time since I've gone live, but I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to have you guys here. Tonight I'm going to be doing my lives, or rather, I'm going to be doing my blooms live with you guys. Oh, hey, Doris. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Lamora. Welcome. I am so grateful to have you guys here. Tonight is one of those rare occasions uh, that I, I quite did not plan for to do some uh, live streaming. But I figured I'm here. I'm painting anyway, so why not do it with you guys? I'd rather do it with you guys. So I'm doing a ton of blooms anyway. Different color arrangements and whatnot, so I figured why not involve you lovely human beings in this process. I'm so grateful to have all you guys here. Thank you. Now, key thing when you do your blooms, right? Is you wanna blow, you wanna blow your cell activator over the other colors if possible, right? And you want to try to not blow so hard, like you can kind of see that I did right there. You see that I got the um, the base coat is showing through that white, so I blew a little bit too hard. Doris, you're amazing. I appreciate you. I haven't done a live stream in so long, so I'm very excited to have you guys here watching right now. God, I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, it's kind of random, and I totally appreciate the fact that you had time to come over here and check it. So, yeah. So, with the, the last Bloom recipe video I put out, I know some of you guys are probably curious. I haven't done a how-to yet, but I will. But when you blow the cell activator, you want to try to blow it over the colors. Try not to blow too hard down into the paint because you're going to get the base coat exposed kind of like I did there. All right, so as you know, after you blow it out, you need to let the cells kind of, you need to let the paint kind of flow towards the center a little bit. And then once everything is kind of settled towards the middle, then you can spin it or stretch it, tilt it, however you want to do it to let the blooms be exposed. And there's the blooms right there. I still have a little bit of white here, a little bit of white there, so I still need to spin a little bit. You wanna kinda of alternate directions. So I spun this way last time, now I wanna spin this way. Cause if you keep spinning the same way, your composition is going to rotate the same direction as you've been spinning. I've done so many of these tonight. I can't even explain to you how many of these I've done. I wanna say this is my 10th set. Hold on, I'll be right back taking this to the drying table. Come back 
back and do a few more sets. I am so on. You saw my TikTok? Yep. I definitely have a TikTok. I have a YouTube. Um, I'm super grateful that you have followed me over here on YouTube as well. I went live on TikTok here not too long ago. But I am trying to get all of these blooms done for the holidays. And it's pretty intense right now. So I'm grateful you're here, Lamara. It makes me super happy to see you guys here. Doris, as always. I really didn't expect Doris to be here just because it is very unexpected. I typically don't go live on my channel. But I decided, you know, maybe why not? Couldn't hurt anything. I'm doing stuff everybody loves anyway, and I have to do it. Oh, uh, Doris, TikTok's kind of rough. TikTok is a very different audience than YouTube, for sure. I've noticed that since I've been posting over there. All right, so we get this centered and then we'll blow it out. I'm gonna try to keep it in the frame so you guys can see it better. So you blow until you see the cells start to form like they are right now. And the cells started to form. You make speed paintings. I do the same thing, Twisted Art Livy. That's what I do. I pretty much, I use like a lot of the same videos and uh, on TikTok, I upload them at like 3000% speed, get them close to, I think the algorithm on TikTok was asking for 23 to, I don't know, 15 to 23 second videos here a few months back. So I try to keep my videos that length, but I also try to keep them engaging to the point, you know, I mean, I try to let the art tell the story. Jill, are you just using house paint on the base? Yes, I am just using house paint. This house paint is Valspar 2000, satin interior. Uh, the numbers would be, you're looking for 670353 High Hide White. But ultimately, as long as you have a satin interior paint, that's really all that matters with Blooms. It doesn't have to be a particular brand as long as it is a satin interior paint because as long as you blow them correctly, it won't have an issue. I have never had a set of coasters crack, craze, or anything based on the paints I've used because for the most part, the pillow paint, which is the house paint you're talking about, is, it is only there to let the paint slide on the surface. So as long as it is a, they will dry without crazing or cracking. I've never had any problem with that with any of the satin interior paints that I've used. The reason in my recipe video that I give a specific brand is so that everybody knows what they're looking for. So it hopefully will generate less right in the middle. Do you see that where I pointed? All right. So I'm basically painting all these so that I have sets of coasters to um, bring to my German market here next month. Because it's gonna take a week or so for these to fully dry and cure, and then I can start applying resin to them. You're buffering here, yeah. I do apologize, I am on Wi-Fi right now. And so my connection is not gonna be completely super stable right now. 
So, and this is the main reason that I don't go live because I want to offer you guys value, but I don't want you guys seeing a ton of buffering and all that stuff because I wish I could go live more often, but this is the main reason why I don't. Because I, I have no control over the internet where I'm at. My studio is a decent distance away from the house. So my Wi-Fi connection is not as stable as I would like it to be. But I appreciate you guys being here. And if I can answer any questions as far as Shelly Art Bloom Pours are concerned... I will definitely do that. Hi, Monica's Creativities. How are you doing? All right, so we let the paints kind of pull towards the center a little bit. Uh-oh. My hands are completely covered in paint, so I'm going to try to get to new comments here. There we go. Yeah, Monica, I I had to scrape the other tile because when I was pointing earlier, uh, some paint off my gloves dripped right into the middle of it, ruined the composition. So, thank you, Melissa. I, I appreciate you being here, and you. I hope that this, like you seeing this on a live stream, will better show you how to do the bloom pour technique. So if you have any questions at all, there's no such thing as a stupid question at all. So if you have any questions, please ask me so I can answer them live right now. I would love to be able to help you guys. Oh, Karen, thank you. Yeah, the buffering is, it's something really I can't control right now because I am on Wi-Fi, but if any of you have questions, please ask. I, I really want to be able to answer. Yeah, and all that stuff. You can see kind of like a whole bunch of the um, bloom pours that I've done today. I think I've done a total of like 10 different bloom pours today. A lot of the things I do, I don't record. Some of them I do just to bring awareness to them because they're gorgeous. And I want you guys to have ideas. But a lot of the things I do, I don't record because acrylic pouring is like my therapy. It's, it's very therapeutic to me to be able to paint. So it's like my happy place, so to speak. Yeah, quite a few might be buffering and I totally apologize. Uh, right now, I have not cleaned the tiles at all because... With the pillow paint that I'm pouring on top of it, that covers any amount of whatever sediment may be on top of those tiles. Now, if I know that they've been exposed, exposed, exposed to some kind of oil, I'll use some rubbing alcohol wipes and clean them off. But if I go when I like when I go to Lowe's and I buy these out of the box. Typically, I don't clean them because there's no real reason to clean them. Most of your cleaning and whatnot will come after you do your pour because the Minwax wood conditioner has oils in it and you need to be able to remove those oils. It's my therapy too. I have my granddaughters most of the time and she's three years old and sometimes need a break. I totally understand I have four, three boys in the house that I'm at right now. So I totally get the whole need in a break. I love those kids though, they're amazing. But sometimes, you know, you just need to get that little bit of a break and a little bit of time yourself. And Monica says, my happy place is creating with resin. I kind of envy you, Monica, because here, I'm going to tell you a secret. You ready? I'm a little bit nervous working with resin 
Doris is super good with resin. I am not. I am very bad with it. Uh, me and resin don't have a good relationship together. A lot of the time, I'll end up messing up my resin stuff. Melissa Crocker, me too. Hell yeah, Doris. All right, let me spin this one out for you guys. We got one more in this color palette, and then I think I'm going to switch up the layering, but I really like these colors together. All right, see? Now, do you see how there's that white here? I'm trying not to put my finger over the coaster. There's white here. There's white there. But that is the base coat. So the reason I'm seeing that is because I'm blowing too hard on those colors and I'm pushing through the colors into the base coat and you're seeing it get exposed there. So that is an error on my part. But since the colors I'm using, they kind of go well with the white, I can leave it that way and it looks okay. But if I was using more dark colors, I would have to redo this coaster or redo this tile so that the color combinations worked better together. All right. We need one more of this color combination and that is all of them. I make it look easy. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of that is just practice. I, I wish, you know what? I'm gonna show you guys this. Hold on, let me pour this base coat on here. You remember that blue and pink one that I did? I think a week and a half ago. Let me show you this. I'm gonna show you my mistakes with this one. Cause you guys typically don't get to see like my mistakes. Okay, so you may or may not remember what it looked like when I poured it. But that's how it dried. Okay, and I have a video that's going to come out Saturday and it's going to show you why it dried this way. Okay, you can kind of see it here. I'm trying to make it so it focuses. But I didn't scrape these edges here. So it continued to pull the composition off the edge while it dried overnight and this is why it looks all distorted the way it does because all this pink was in the center here and it looked a lot better but now it doesn't look quite as good and that very first one did the same thing because i didn't scrape the edges the very first one of that video you can see where the drips dried here and here that's how it dried it dried terribly now, a lot of my things don't dry that way. And I know some people will say it's because your drying area wasn't level, but my drying area was level. It was the fact that I forgot to scrape those edges. And that was something I learned a long time ago to do. I mean, I appreciate you, Tammy. It still looks cool, and I think it does too. But it ended up not looking like the way I wanted it to look. You know? Thank you, Doris. I appreciate you and Tammy both. But see, minor, like, those are little things that you pick up along the way that you might not think about. Is like scraping the edges of the painting, kind of breaking that surface, surface tension. It's like little things like that that can distort the way your painting looks. So I have a video that's going to come out Saturday that is all about the 10 things that I wish I knew before I started acrylic pouring. And I'll say this right now, like, I feel like this video has benefit for uh, brand new acrylic pourers and veterans alike, because it's going to, it's pretty much a compendium of like the 10 most uh, the ten, the ten things that I wish I knew the most over the last two years that I've been painting. 
drips through that to resin two doors. I, I, I can't say I know that, but I agree with you. I bet you they do. And normally I don't forget to, to scrape the paintings, but I just did that day. I don't know why. So this, these blooms are done with the same recipe that I, I did my video on here a few days back. Um, I mean, I know I'm making it, I'm making it look easy probably. I apologize for the exposure changing. It's because my black gloves keep getting in the way. But I, I understand that I'm making it look easier than it is. But it, just please understand that it, I have made so many mistakes. <laughs> oh, I am definitely distracted by those three boys. They are always coming in here because they, you know, they want to be part of whatever I'm doing. And a lot of the time I'm recording videos or, you know, trying to do things for the YouTube channel and they are always in here, which is fine. I don't mind. I'll paint with them all day long. You know what I mean? Polypore? What do you mean, Doris? As far as... Polypore is concerned. All right, let me move this one off and I'll come back and I will read that comment, Doris. But let me know what you mean because I'm not sure what you mean by polypore. coming back y'all I'm just trying to grab colors because I have a little bit of this medium left I'm trying to decide what colors go well with this blue here Because I have all these different colors of blue. Okay, so the medium that Color Art makes. No, I haven't. I have not used it yet. Hi, Sharon Shelley Bomb Art. Welcome. All right, so I got a bunch of these shades of blue. What colors would you like to see? I have enough medium to probably mix two different colors. And I'll do them on screen with you so you guys can kind of get a little behind the scenes of how I mix my paints too. Nope, I'm still here, Michelle. We're still working. I'm just we're just talking about colors right now. Good night, Tammy. I've been using a lot of uh mica pigment pigments here recently so I have almost every shade of blue already mixed I was doing a bunch of sky blue kind of pores um, what color would you like to see with these sky blue pigments I guess I could probably show you the pigments I have that I think might look good with it. All right, let me grab some of these. All right. Try putting a bit of purple on before the cell activator. Okay, silver gray, got it. Prussian blue, I do not have Prussian blue mixed, but I have Prussian blue. So, let me see here. Hey, Miss Toxic Avenger, welcome. Welcome to the channel here. So what I'm thinking might look good with these colors is, oh, that light is not doing any of these justice. All right, so I have these Secura pigments here that are, they're actually really cool colors. 
silver gray, chestnut brown, gold pearl, bronze. Good evening, Miss Toxic Avenger. Welcome. Glad you're here. All right, so we were talking about Prussian blue and what was the other color real quick? Purple, Prussian blue and purple. So what I can do is I have some of the most gorgeous purple that I, it's, it's a favorite of mine. It is a dioxazine purple. No, that's not it, hold on. I kind of wish I could just carry you guys around with me, but, oh, there it is. Okay, found it. All right, so I have Lucutex Basics Dioxazine Purple. And I would put that purple down before. Unfortunately, I don't have any Prussian Blue, Doris. I'm sorry. I wish I did. And I need to... Here, let me just mix this on camera so you guys can watch. So I put maybe a tablespoon of dioxazine purple in there. And then this is the pouring medium as per my recipe video for blooms. It's quite thick as you can see. It's about a two second trace. And I go over trace in the video that's gonna come out on Saturday. So if you're curious about that, just make sure you watch that video. I kind of go over it. Oh, goodness gracious, here we go. I'm throwing paint around. All right, so this is that dioxazine purple. I think my camera will focus on it, but it's a, a very nice, brilliant purple. But what you need to do, like I added the medium, right? But I did not add any polyacrylic because this is a medium body. <clears throat> With the medium body, I need to add an equal amount of polyacrylic to the paint to thin it out enough to where it is the same consistency as my fluid paints. So that's about how much I kind of eyeball it. I normally, I wouldn't recommend eyeballing it just because a lot of the time you might be a little bit mistaken with the, the amounts. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to eyeball it. Yeah, Doris, Tish definitely rubbed off on me as far as uh, Trace is concerned. I found that I can learn a lot about how other artists are mixing their paints by trace. And it's it's been super helpful for me because a lot of artists tell you to mix your paints to the consistency of warm honey. Yeah, Twisted Art Lady, I do too most of the time. It's just if I'm doing something that a lot of people are gonna watch, I wanna try to make it so they can replicate it. I want to make sure that, you know, other people can do the same exact things that I'm doing and get the same results. Oh, Fiona does too, Doris? That's crazy. All right, so I apologize. I'm mixing off screen. A little white between the blues. You know what? I may have... A little bit of white that I can use to kind of break up those blues a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll do dark blue to light blue. Then I will put a white and then a dioxazine purple. Yeah. Okay. So Sharon, let me let me talk about trace real quick. Okay. So a lot of artists, right? I don't know how well you can see that dripping back into the cup. You can't see it at all. Okay, hold on. Let me try and find a different color. All right. So, trace, right? You count the seconds that it leaves a mound. So you can see this leaves a mound for about one second before it falls back into the cup. I'm trying to move it so it focuses. 
So this paint is a one second trace because it leaves about a one second mound before it settles back down to level. And that's what we're talking about with trace. So there's zero second trace, which is very fluid. And then there is a one second trace and two second trace. It's essentially just like Doris has said, it's how long the paint stays in the mound before it settles to level again. So I use that technique a lot when I'm watching other artists that I really, you know, I want to try to duplicate or replicate some of the stuff they're doing. I will watch what the trace of their paint is when they're pouring it on the canvas. That way it helps me at least have a starting point. So I know that I'm at least starting from something similar to the what they're working with. Yeah, it, it's super helpful. And I wish somebody would have told me that like forever ago, but I recently learned about that and it's part of the video that I'm gonna be coming out on Saturday with talks about you know, 10 tips I wish I would have known before I started painting. All right, so somebody said add a little bit of white. So we are gonna add a little bit of white. But it is again gonna be some of this mica pigments because I've become addicted to these things here recently. All right. So this is actually called uh, Rutile Silver and it is a Secura pigment. The link for that is in the description of my last video. I don't think much is gonna be in the description of this video at all because I kind of just on the fly I just decided I was gonna go live. So when you mix your mica pigments, I put a little bit of pouring medium in there. I put Liquitex in there just to make sure that it, it reacts with those powders very well. And then once everything is fully incorporated, I can add my medium to it. And this is the same medium that is in my Shelly Art video. And after that, mix that until it's completely incorporated. You wanna mix gently because this medium is very thick. It's about a two second trace. Oh, well. So mix it fairly gently so you can get all the bubbles out of it. And then I'm gonna put some gloves on and we'll pour this next set of four with these color combinations here. Yeah, that's very true. A lot of the time I've been trying to use my, like my heat gun to pop the bubbles in the paint, but Doris is absolutely right. The paint scorches very easily. House paint will dry very quickly. So the heat gun almost provides too much heat sometimes and makes it really difficult to work with. All right. So a little bit of house paint. And we're gonna start with the dark blue here. Working our way to lighter blue. This creates that beautiful like gradient effect. I'm making such a mess over here. You guys have no idea. All right, so lighter blue. And then y'all wanted to see a purple. So this is that really gorgeous dioxazine purple. Just a small amount goes a long way. And this pearl color to kind of accentuate the black cell activator. Do you like mica powders versus pigments? I don't know which I should get. This little piggy pig. Oh, I would have to say, Daniel, 
I bought this little piggy pignets and oh my goodness. I absolutely love them. Here, let me show you a couple of them. My hands are not as badly covered in paint as they normally are. But I actually bought them this week. They just got here. So I have this really deep blue. This gold right here, um, a lot of artists will talk about the 24 karat gold you can get from, I wanna say it's deco art, I'm not sure. But that gold from this little piggy is completely comparable to that. It is amazing. I got this nice, brilliant green. And that silver color that you see is this little piggy's uh, lighter color here. So I just recently got a bunch of those and they're amazing. It's freezing in Minnesota. Who's in Florida? Who did I miss? I'm from Florida. I grew up my whole life in Daytona Beach. All right. You live in Phoenix, hot, hot, hot. Hell yeah. I'm in Florida too, Tampa, Daniel. I miss Tampa when I was a younger lad. I used to go to Ybor City all the time. But that was a long time ago. Quite a long time ago. All right, so we're letting these cells kind of pull, pour, uh, pull back to the center because when you blow it out, that pushes a big pit in the middle. And, oh, you're in Charleston, South Carolina? You are like an hour away from me, Jay. Hell yeah, the Ritz is where it's at. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. You're starting to bring back memories. I need to, I'm cut off. No more of that, right? Hey, Dina, what's up? How's it going? Welcome. All right. So, uh, do you see what I, I just, Frickin' goodness. Okay, so anyway, here let's let's do this again. My paint, my hands get completely covered in paint. I just drip paint all over the center of the composition. You know, like kind of the most important part. Oh goodness! I need to get better to this whole live streaming thing. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't have much of an accent. And you know why? Because military for 21 years, is I'm going to blame it on that. Because I've lived in all over the dang place. Kind of feel like a mutt. I don't really have a home anymore. But it is what it is. I can't believe that. Just I just drip paint all over everything. Oh, goodness. Rookie mistake. It happens, though. Mistakes happen. And I'm glad that you guys are here to see it. You know what I mean? Hey, Coco, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the live stream, actually. What? I don't do lives very often. This is a pretty rare occurrence right here. All right. But like I'd like to say, I messed up that last one. But this one is going to end up even better than that one is. Because, you know, I like to think positive. And they probably will, actually. You never know. So let me blow this thing out, huh? Uh-oh. I'm already loving what I'm seeing. All right. So what's up? Those beautiful purples. That purple, though... Whoever made the suggestion for that really deep purple, you are the real MVP right now. I'm just saying. That is a crazy color combination. I am not going to put my hand over this tile again, but I really hope that you can see the same thing that I'm seeing right now. You're in western New York and it's 60 degrees? What? Yeah, Susan, there's nothing in the base paint. It is literally just house paint. It is satin interior house paint. Yeah, that dioxazine purple is insane right now. 
what is it doing? So I'm letting it pull back towards the middle and then I'm gonna spin it out. But I wanna let those cells develop just a little bit more before I spin it. You're at 45? I think it's about 45 here too in North Carolina. Yeah, that dioxin purple is such a good color. All right, so we are ready to kind of spin this out. Hey, Mel, what's going on, Melinda? I haven't been live in forever. <laughs> 75 degrees in Missouri, what? Is this even real life? All right, so we still have a little bit of white over in this corner that I kind of want to continue to spin and push that off. So we're going to spin it one more again. And that white is now gone. So let me move this over to the table. I'm super excited to show you guys like all of the things I've been painting all night tonight. I'll be right back. completely covered in paint all right it's so cool to have all you guys here I hope you guys are having a great evening I know it's well I mean on the east coast at least I know it's starting to get a little late but I appreciate you guys having the time to come on and swing by So we had them dark blue first. And if I was well prepared, I would be able to tell you the names of these colors. But I am not well prepared right now. Oh my goodness, Dina, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, I so appreciate that, that's awesome. Model American over here. Coco, I thank you. I appreciate that too. But Dina, like, I don't think I've ever gotten a tip on YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, it totally makes my day. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Aw, oh, Melissa, thank you so much. Yeah, I try to make it kind of like a... I try to keep it entertaining, but I try to, like, talk to you guys... I try to incorporate you guys in the colors I use. Whenever I do a live, I try to make it so it's interesting to everybody. And it's hard. It's hard to please everybody because everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Damn, Sharon, thank you so much. Woo! -hoo! You guys are awesome. I love you guys. <laughs> you guys are so cool. All right, so let's blow this thing out. That's so cool. Oh, wait, no, we can't blow it out yet. You guys you guys got me shook over here. Like, I didn't even put the cell activator down. I'm about to blow this, like, white paint just everywhere. <laughs> What's going on here? Johnny's going crazy. He's losing his mind over here. All right, yeah, that's awesome, though. Thank you so much, Dina and Sharon. You guys are amazing. Yeah. And Sharon, I don't mind teaching. I love teaching. My last five years in the Army, I was actually an instructor over there. So I love teaching and being able to help people with a thing like this. Okay, so here, I'm going to get in my soapbox for a second. Being able to like help somebody with an art form like this, right? This has helped me fight through the depression that I had through the things that I've had to do in the military. I'm not gonna get into that, but like learning this process and and getting instruction from other people has helped me, it's helped pull me out of a really dark place. So I feel like it is my obligation and I, I'm honored to be able to give back to the community by trying to share the mistakes I've made and help other people along the way as much as possible. 
<laughs> yeah, just swipe it off. For real, Jay. But I love helping you guys. And I really hope that, like, if any of you ever have any questions about how to do some of this stuff, you ask. Because I really do try my best to respond to every comment. Every question, every comment. Like, if there's something you want to know, I want to be able to help. That saved your life, Twisted Art Living. I completely, I can empathize with that, and I understand that completely. Because just having this creative outlet has has helped me so much over the last three years. It helped me with your mom's death, Coco. I understand that completely. I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah, absolutely, Doris. I know that you lost yours. But just being able to like do this stuff and to go into your own happy place and be able to you know, create and you have this outlet here and just this fantastic community of human beings that we all share the same passion and everything. It's just, it's so nice to be able to connect with other people that are so like-minded because that's super rare in the world today. It really is. Because so many people are, I mean, it, I don't know, the world's so different than what I thought it was going to be when I was younger. But it's really nice to be able to make that connection with like-minded people. Yeah, that's true, Coco. But I, I do understand also that it would heart, it would be difficult to see it that way from the inside looking in, or looking, you know what I mean? From from that point of view. Because nobody wants to lose a loved one at all. So let me move this to my drawing table, and I will be right back, you lovely human beings. Run out of space. Hold on. Driving another cup. Alright, I got enough space for one more. And then we're gonna do our little personal part of this live stream. I'm sorry to hear that, Coco. That's terrible. It's so sad that, like, so much bad stuff happens to really good people. If I could take all the pain out of you guys, I wish I could. I really wish. But, I mean, it makes everybody who they are today. In a way, it's it's all right. That's a lot of pain. Yeah, that's a lot of pain. <laughs> you know me, though. Like, if you've been watching my videos, you know I use way too much paint. I use way more paint than I should most times. Yeah. The pillow paint, though, is relatively inexpensive compared to, like, the, the house paint that I'm talking about is relatively inexpensive. And as you see, I'm collecting it into this... Hold on, one sec. Give me a second. There's a plastic bag going around here, so it all pools underneath. And I can reuse all of this for additional pillow if I want to. So I do, I do typically reuse it. Let me wipe my hands off because I still got one more color to add. All right, so this is the silver. And 
And then the black cell activator. There it is. All right. Spin it a little bit. I try to get it centered on the tile as much as I can. All right. I think I bumped. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know, I know, Coco. Like, getting, like, all this paint. Like, you should see some of my pairs of shorts. Like, my pairs of shorts and pants and stuff, they're completely covered. I should take other people's advice and get me an apron. I just feel weird wearing an apron. But I should get one. But, yeah, all this excess paint that I'm wasting, I'm going to reuse again. Oh, you hate the feeling of paint? What? You're absolutely right. The stuff, some of this stuff is very expensive. I try to, I have, actually, today, I did an experiment trying to find a cheaper version of it. So I went and got some paint from Walmart. I got a different paint from Lowe's and a different paint from Home Depot. Trying to experiment to find a cheaper medium for you guys to use from my last video. And... The best one I came up with was the one from Home Depot. It was actually a suggestion from Waterfall Acrylics. It was the Bear uh, 83, I think it was 8300. Hold on, let me look. Yeah, Bear 8300 Deep Base. So that would be the replacement. Susan Friedman, yes. My pour mix is available. I want to say it was about four videos back. I did a Shelly Art Bloom recipe video that I, it's, it's like a three minute video where I went into kind of detail about what my recipe is for these pours in specific. So, all right. The Oops Paint in store, some of it is good. I found a great apron. It wipes clean. Is it made of silicone? That'd be nuts. All right, so I'm gonna take these gloves off and then you all are about to get like a whole behind the scenes, scenes kind of tour of my garage slash studio. But yeah. All right, so as you can see, it's a huge mess right now. Huge mess, but yeah. All right. So this is the drying area. So I made some really nifty, like coffee looking colors. And they ended up really cool looking this, this afternoon. All of this is just super wet right now. Oh, Melinda, you just got the notification? Oh man. And these are the treves for these sets of coasters, all these coffee coasters. And then these are the pours we just did. I'm gonna show you the first one I did so that you can see how it's changed. All right, so you can see the cells have continued to develop in all of these, but these are the ones I just did with the purple and the blues and the dioxazine, all that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then earlier I did a bunch of sky blue colors, some neon greens and blacks. And then these are like experiments that I was doing. How do I coat the coasters? You don't know how to cover them with? Okay, so. Hi. <laughs> I will show you exactly what I use. Okay, so I use a barrier coat because I do use a uh, Minwax wooden conditioner in my um, in my cell activator, and there is oils in that. So Liquitex Gloss Gel. I use two parts of this to one part water, and I make a barrier coat over the top. So. I clean most of the oils off as much as I can. 
and then I paint them with that gloss coat and it creates kind of a barrier from the, the oils so that way when I do pour resin over them the resin doesn't repel from the, the oils and then I make the coasters that way and that is what I coat them with. I have pain on my nose. I know. I know. I know. But hey, thank you guys for joining me. It was awesome having you guys here. And you guys are amazing. And I care about every one of you. I hope you have a great night tonight. And I will hopefully see you soon. I'm learning to point at the camera. I sell them on uh, my Shopify store. Links in the description like all of my videos. So I sell them there. But I hope you guys have a great night. And I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Take care.